welcome to our online service of worship for Sunday, July the 19th. I'm Pastor Heather, and I serve the Clarksville First United Methodist Church, and it is my honor to bid you peace and blessings this morning in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. We have a wonderful service of worship planned for you today that will include some special music by our college age students, and they are always a blessing to us when we get to hear them gather and sing. And so I pray this service today will be strengthening and encouraging and inspiring and a true blessing for you in the days ahead. As we begin service this morning, I would invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship as we pray together with a prayer video that teaches us a little something about what would be a great way to start off our day in prayer. And so will you pray with me? Good morning, Lord. Thank you for a new day. Thank you that your compassion is renewed every morning. Great is your faithfulness and your steadfast love, O oh Lord. I don't know what all is going to happen today and how much I'll get done, but you do. So I give this day to you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, Father. Energize me for your work because you know how tired these bones are. Awaken me to the wonder of your salvation and quicken my spirit to the reality of your work in my life. Lord, my mind is filled with creative ideas, but they're all jumbled. Holy Spirit, come and hover over my mind like you hovered over the waters at creation and speak order out of the chaos. Help me to cease striving and to trust that you will give me all I need today to do the work you've given me to do. You will be faithful to complete the good work you've started. And as I step out into my day, I declare your sovereignty over every area of my life. I entrust myself to you and ask that you use me however you see fit. This day is yours. My body is yours. My mind is yours. Everything I am is yours. May you be pleased with me today. Amen. This is All I Need Is You by Dan Adler.
So, I don't know how many of you follow the governor's daily briefings or how many of you read our bishop's posts on Facebook or on the conference website, which is www.arumc, as in Arkansas United Methodist Church, dot com, A-R-U-M-C dot com. I don't know how many of you follow the governor's posts, the bishop's posts, but I'll tell you that I appreciate our governor's leadership throughout this crisis, and I especially appreciate our bishop's leadership. And so what I thought I would do for this morning is to share a compilation of several bits of the bishop's posts recently with you and then share a few of my reflections on those posts. So for this morning, what I'd like to do is begin by sharing together in a prayer and then I will share um, the bishop's words with you. Let us pray together. Gracious and loving God, you alone are our salvation and we put our full trust in you and in your steadfast love, in your mercy and in your care for us. As we join together in spirit to offer our acts of worship to you this morning, Lord, we pray for your wisdom, your guidance, your spirit's direction in our lives, and for your healing presence and peace. Draw near to us, Lord, now as we worship you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let me share a few of the words from our bishop that he posted online this week. He writes, there is a large-scale resurgence of COVID-19 in much of the country, and things are going to get worse. Thousands of people will die. Millions will suffer, especially those on the margins, because of the economy being shattered and the virus and so much more. And all of us will be involved in deep soul-searching regarding all of these issues for years to come. Why? Because some people still think that all of this COVID-19 stuff is a hoax. Because there is mass denial about what we're dealing with and the severity of it. And because some people just don't care. Let me be just as clear as I can. How we respond to COVID-19 is a spiritual matter of the highest magnitude for those of us who love and follow Jesus. That's because loving Jesus means living the Jesus way, not just in our heads, but with our lives. And Jesus, our Lord and Savior, tells us we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. This means thinking about the well-being of our neighbors, reaching out to our neighbors, doing those things that can make a concrete difference for our neighbors. And right now, that means doing one simple thing, wearing a mask. We must think of wearing a mask and stopping the spread of the virus as a matter of extending our Christian love to others. Yes, we long to gather face to face. We long to go back to living life as normal. And yes, we long to gather together with our sisters and brothers in the faith as we pray and worship and study and serve. But in this season, Jesus' words about loving our neighbor means we go slow. Let us take small steps and make sure that we do it with our masks on. It is better to go slow and then speed up than to go too quickly and have to deal with illness or death of someone we or someone else knows and loves. As I mentioned earlier, I really and sincerely truly appreciate our bishop's thoughtful leadership throughout this whole situation. He has been carefully and attentively listening to the science. He has been consistently soliciting comments, questions, and concerns from people throughout our conference to get an idea of how he can best lead us through this uncharted territory that we're all walking through together. He has um, been hopeful and positive in all of his posts throughout this entire time even in the darkest of times, he keeps a hopeful frame of mind. And the thing I appreciate most about how our bishop is leading us through all of this is that he keeps Jesus Christ in the front and center of his mind in all the decisions that he makes, in all the conversations that he has, in all the prayer times that he leads with us pastors throughout the conference. And I really, really appreciate that. Now, this message that he gives out in this post that I just read about going slow and wearing a mask is no doubt 
a message that we need to hear again and again and again. But the message that he more consistently um, propagates throughout his post that I want us to think about, reflect upon, and forever remember is this one. He says it over and over again in different ways, in different posts, but it's the same message. It's this message that says how we respond to COVID-19 is a spiritual matter of the highest magnitude. How we believers in Christ, disciples of Jesus, how we respond to this is a spiritual matter of the highest magnitude. I love this phrase because we all know the great commandment, right? Jesus spoke this in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it's recorded. And he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. We know that commandment, right? It is the greatest commandment, according to Jesus. And John's gospel, even though it's framed a little differently, it's the same. He says, love one another. As I have loved you, so must you love one another. By living in this way, people will know that you are my disciples. People will know that you're disciples because of how you live, how you show concern and love and nurturance and care for your neighbor how you love God and how you love yourself. Living this way, expressing deep concern for one another, this is what will make all the difference. And it is indeed a spiritual matter of the highest magnitude. To love Jesus means to live the Jesus way. Not just in theory, not just in our words, our thoughts, but in our day-to-day -day life decisions. Each one of us throughout our daily lives is called to be an imitation of Christ, to live a life that imitates Christ. Each one of us is called to be a little Christ, and that is a high calling church. It's a high standard. It's of the highest magnitude, such as what the bishop was saying. That's a high calling to live up to. We're called to be devoted to God, body, mind, and spirit with all of our strength, loving him, seeking to follow in his will and follow his ways. Just like Jesus did, that's what we're called to do, to be a little Jesus in the world in the way that we love God. We're also called to love our neighbor, to care for our neighbor, to help our neighbor, no matter who they are, no matter the color of their skin, no matter their background, no matter any of it. We are all precious in God's sight and we are called to love one another as we love ourselves, to be little Jesuses in how we treat one another. That's a beautiful thing, a high calling, hard to do, but a beautiful thing. And we're called to try to make this creation of God's more whole, just like Jesus did, to imitate Christ in that way. When John Wesley was pastoring to communities of the faithful, many of them asked him for the same thing over and over again until he finally replied and figured something out for them. They would ask him over and over, Wesley, teach us a way, a strategy, some rules to live by. Give us some guidelines for how we can stay close to God and for how we can live as faithful disciples to our neighbors in alignment with the great commandment. And so Wesley established three general rules from which we get our three simple rules that Reuben Job has written so beautifully about. Um, these are rules for believers in faith communities to follow, ways for us to seek to live day in and day out so that we can be the greatest disciples we can be, the greatest imitations of Christ and people who can impact the world for Christ. And so eventually what he came down to uh, were these general rules, which, like I said, have been boiled down to the three simple rules. And you probably know them. You've probably heard about them. That is to do no harm, to do good, and to stay in love with and God. And the hope was that these general rules, these three rules, would give sustenance and hope and direction to those who practice them every day in their lives. And these three simple rules are simple in the sense that they're easy to remember, easy to memorize. 
do no harm, do good, stay in love with God. Not hard to memorize. And on some level, even children can understand them and practice them. So in that sense, they are simple. But on the other hand, they are so profound. They are so deep and rich in their meaning and what they ask of us. And they really do have the potential to really shake up our lives if we're really trying to seek to live into those three simple rules every day, day after day. They really do have the potential to shake up our lives, to challenge us at the depths of who we are. And so simple, but not easy. But nothing is easy, right? That is of such profound importance for us, for our neighbor, and for our world. Like, for example, it is not easy to do no harm, right? There's no way we could in this lifetime ever fully live into that rule because we're always on the edge of doing some kind of harm to somebody, even in ways we're not even aware of. There's no way we can fully live out and perfect that rule of doing no harm to other people. But that doesn't mean we don't try. It does not mean we don't try. And so even if you are one of those who doesn't fully believe and is not fully convinced that masks are 100% going to keep you safe, somebody else safe, whatever, it is not going to hurt us to try to stem the tide of this thing. It is getting so out of control and we will never get back to any semblance of normal and families will continue to hurt and the economy will continue to struggle. It will all continue to be so bad for us if we don't get a handle on it. And so do no harm. That is one of the three simple rules that we can live by and do good. You know, wear your mask, keep apart from one another, keep your distance. Um, when you go out, if you have to go out, stay away from other people and be mindful of your surroundings and don't endanger anyone else and um, stay at home as much as you can just to make this all so much easier for our medical workers and our contact tracers and our leaders like our governor and our bishop, pastors. I mean, this is critical stuff. It seems that this is the very least that we can do, especially if we're a follower of Christ, to do our best to do no harm to others, to live the Jesus way in a way that helps show our love and concern, not just for ourselves, but for other people. And let me add just one more thought before we close today. To live this kind of life that we have been describing, where we love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, to love our neighbors as we love ourselves, and to seek with all of our might to do no harm, to do all the good we can, and to stay in love with God. To live that kind of life is really not about us doing things that please God. Now, if we live that way, surely, yes, that would please God. Amen. But it's really not about that. For Wesley, for us to follow the great command and for us to live this kind of life that he designates in these rules for his bands and societies and classes that he is pastoring over, for him, the ultimate goal of all of that kind of living is that each one of us individually would be transformed transformed, made more holy, made more righteous, that each one of our lives would come more fully in line with the will of God for how he wants us to live and calls us to live. That's ultimately why we do it. So often people think of the religious things that we do or the spiritual things that we do um, as I'm going to do these things because if I do them, then God is going to be pleased. And if God is pleased, well, then one day when I enter into glory, I will hear those, word, those words, um, well done, good and faithful servant, right? It's always so about me. How human is that? But really, it is about God's desire for us and who God ultimately created us to be. He created us to be, as we said, little Christ, he created us to live as an imitation of Christ in the world and to have the same kind of impact on the world that Christ did. And so he needs us transformed because we are sinful. We are rough around the edges. We are ragged. We make bad choices. We go off, off, way off the path. We don't follow God's will. God wants us to be honed in, brought in into his image 
walking in his path, in his light, following his guidance, doing things the way he would do them so that we can have the same kind of impact on the world Jesus did. And so it's really all about our transformation. That's why we love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. So as we love God, God can grow the love inside of us for him. Just like Jesus was full of love for him, right? Um, and that's why we love our neighbors as we love ourselves, because of course God wants us to love ourselves, but he wants us to love our neighbors and to care for one another. And the more we do that, and the more we do that, and the more we do that, the more that becomes the natural course of our being. It transforms and shapes and molds us into this Christ-like being. And that's all wrapped up in doing no harm and doing good and staying in love with God, right? And so um, that is the last thing I want to offer. This morning, we seek to live this Jesus way so that we be a, ultimately become like Jesus. And so um, throughout the pandemic and throughout it all, whether we're in the middle of this COVID-19 era for a long, long, long time or just a short while longer, we're However it turns out, I just beg of you to let your life be transformed by God and do that by doing what God calls you to do, to care for one another. And for me, for the bishop, for so many, one of the best ways we can do that right now, to show our love for our neighbor, is just to protect ourselves and to protect them from us. Right? Even if we're not sick, we may not even know we're sick. Just to be mindful, concerned about other people. So stay safe this week, church. Love God, love yourself, and love others. Amen. Love.